Best quote on making money. Best quote on making money, you get paid in proportion to the difficulty of problems you solve. So, you know, solve a simple problem, you're gonna get a simple paycheck. Solve a hard enough problem, and the world will give you all our money. You know, that's, that, that's Elon Musk's quote, or so they say. And uh, look at what he's doing, that's the game he's playing. Solving the hardest problems in the world. Interstellar, you know, travel, colonization, the issues with traffic, the issues with Wi-Fi. He's got Tesla that's, you know, working on climate and transportation. And so at the end of the day, when I see people who say to me, Ty, it ain't working out for me financially. I'm like, well, you, there's no money in easy. There's no money in easy. But always the question is, what's the easiest way for me to get started? What's the three things? What's the one book I should read, Ty? I'm like, there's no money in easy. The money comes from the progression. Your progression through the skill set. There's a great book called uh, Deep Work by Cal Newport. Those people who are able to focus when the whole world has an attention span, they say now that's shorter than the average goldfish. An average goldfish, scientists say, has a six second uh, attention span. What do you think that is now in the social media world where people can flip through and get a new hit of dopamine nonstop, day after day, moment after moment, right? That's the easy thing to do, be hypnotized by mass media. But to go your own path, this is difficult. You know, it's like Aristotle said about anger. He said, to be angry is easy, but to be angry at the right person at the right time for the right reason with the right intensity for the right duration, that's difficult. And, you know, the question, your question when it comes to making money should never be, what's the easy way to get started? Ask, what's the hard way to get started that not many people will do? If you talk to a Nobel Prize winner, they call this a barrier to entry. They call this a moat. They call this a sort of network effect that Silicon Valley esteems so highly. Something that keeps most people out. What is money? Money is simple. I often ask people, I give talks, and I've asked this question. I once asked a professor whose specialty was in the definitions of money, and even he couldn't give me the right answer. I say, give me the definition of money in three words, all-encompassing and accurate. You know, people kind of get it right, but scarce in-demand resources. They have to be all three. So if you know how to serve someone coffee, is that scarce? Do a lot of people have that skill? And this is no hate. I'm not looking down upon anybody's station in life. You know, I milked cows by hand on a farm. I sheared sheep. I lived in a mobile home growing up. This is not a deprecation of anybody's life and where they find themselves now. But I will tell you the truth that not many people will tell you, that they wouldn't tell you in school, that they wouldn't tell you in college, that your mom and dad probably wouldn't tell you, which is there's no money in that easy thing. You get paid in proportion to the difficulty of problems you solve. If you know how to hand somebody a cup of coffee, is that a scarce in-demand resource? Well, it's in-demand, but it's not scarce. Therefore, it violates the universal laws of wealth, or maybe not universal, but we could say planet Earth's modern capitalistic laws of wealth. And maybe you'll come up with a better system. I live in Sweden part-time. It's a little more socialist, you know, but... Even there you find these rules applying. These are some sort, these go beyond, these are evolutionary biology at play in wealth. You know, Karl Marx was a great thinker in a sense, but he got it wrong because he didn't understand that evolution and DNA trumps even the wisest, smartest person's attempt to unravel an economy. For the last 10,000 generations of Homo sapiens, your great, 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 great grandmother and grandfather have all been seeking scarce in-demand resources and the people who did survive and you are, you are the offspring of those people. They weren't just people who knew how to hand somebody a cup of coffee or do the lowest common denominator uh, skill set. They were people who figured out the hard things. Your great, great grandfather 
figured out how to, you know, spear a mammoth elephant. And therefore, they survived in that cold winter in one of the past ice ages when everybody else died because they had a scarce in-demand resource. Back then, it wasn't some fiat currency or some crypto digital currency. They had in their possession a skill set hunting. And it was the great hunters and the great gatherers who have survived. And so when I'm talking about money, I'm not just talking about, okay, a Lambo and a cool house and a private jet. I'm talking about the very roots of what makes us survive and that's resource acquisition and so there's an there's something called ess evolutionary stable strategies so to the extent that other people become good at things it no longer works right that's why for example there's one to five percent of planet earth is psychopaths if there was too many psychopaths game theory basically says the system falls apart there's too many people trying to kill each other screw each other over if there's too few, modern game theory says, then it will pay to be a little bit psychopathic. So there's an example on the psychometric social side where you see an ESS, an evolutionary stable, stable strategy being formed. You see the same thing in making money, right? If a whole bunch of people go to college and get a bachelor's degree in English because in the 1960s, that was rare, that was scarce, and was an in-demand resource, a diploma, it worked. But as more and more people did that so that they could earn above average money, AKA hunt and gather above average resources, that stopped working. It stopped working. And so now you find people uh, going the opposite path. And now what's common places for people to have a college degree, and now you see people who do the opposite. Peter Thiel paid a whole bunch of people under the age of 21 to not go to college and just to start to build something. That's where you see Vitalik Buterin built Ethereum and became you know, a billionaire under 25 years old or even younger. Because when everybody else was competing in the old ESS, Evolutionary Stable Strategy, he broke out of it and Peter Thiel encouraged people to break out of it. So you are constantly in a game and you may not realize it and may, nobody might want to admit this to you because most people are lost, but I am telling you how the game works. You know, I run, a, I own a large holding company. I buy things for a living. I buy things that broke. I bought Pier 1 Imports, big furniture home good brand in the United States, one of the biggest ever, 60 year old brand, 1200 stores, $1.7 billion in the year that I bought them, that's their revenue. I bought this, now I own it because they didn't evolve and they were doing what was easy for them which was to stay in the holding powder of what used to work but it didn't work anymore and they didn't evolve and that ess set in and other competitors came in you see this with clothing lines and all of a sudden a young upstart like a, a fashion nova comes in and begins to innovate on top of the entrenched competition and do what is now rare and scarce and in demand, which is to be able to win at the game of e-com. My e-com brands did, you know, the brand, I just bought bodybuilding.com, nine figure e-commerce business. You know, my 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 uh, different brands that I own did 160 million visits in the United States last year. This is a nine figure business, it's 100 million. I manage over 400 people I'm the CEO for, and I'm continuing to acquire and buy up because I understand the ESS, not many people know how to do M&A, merger and acquisition transactions. I have mentors that taught me how to do them. Some of them billionaires, 363 sales, you know, which is a form of bankruptcy liquidation that uses the court system in America. Not many entrepreneurs know it, therefore I wanna do it. I go where the masses don't go. I was focused on being a social media influencer back in 2012, 2013 to about 2018 because nobody was doing it. Now that everybody d does it, I've moved on to the next thing. Some people are like, oh, I don't see you on social media as much. Did you fall off? I'm like, no, I fell up. <laughs> I didn't fall off. I fell up doing bigger and badder things than you can even fathom. But sometimes I'm making war in silence, you know. And then people see and get surprised. Now I own you know eight or ten major brands, big brands. 
These are brand, the smallest brands that I've been buying. Uh, really, we're doing about 500 million in revenue. I've gone down and bought companies smaller that were doing 100 million in revenue, but I'm playing a game. I'm, that's my moat. That's my moat. While everybody competes in the dog eat dog world of who's going to get the most clicks, likes, follows on social media, I'm out here buying companies and building empires. And that's not because even per se, I want to be the richest person in the world. I don't. I seek the good life. You know, what's the good life? It's the balanced life, balancing the four pillars, health, wealth, love, happiness. I break the four pillars into three subsets called the 12 foundations. I break those uh, 12 subsets into three further subsets. Those are the 36 principles that I live my life and there are only, you know, only nine of them are related to making money, but that is an important part. And it is part of you learning a game that's important. Everybody will play it at different levels. Some people will play it, pay it at the very highest level. That's their evolutionary stable strategy is to be one of the big whales. And other people will do it just to have enough, just enough to be financially independent, to be able to have that four pillar of the good life. So I hope you figure it out. But I hope you always remember, you will not break this immutable law of wealth or financial independence. You must seek out to do what's hard. It doesn't have to be the hardest thing, but it, don't seek what's easy because what's easy always stops working. And you saw this throughout time. I, you know, if you read financial history, 1800s in the United States, what happened? Things began to automate. Industrial Revolution, you know, 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. You see the steel, the steam engine. You know, the rise of automation, Henry Ford. And what happened, sadly, and this happened to my family. I grew up with a single mom. You know, my dad was from Harlem, basically a street kid, ended up in prison, Long Beach, California, when I was born. And what somebody never told my dad was, you know, my dad sold cocaine and sold it to an FBI undercover agent. That's how he got put in Terminal Island off Long Beach. And he didn't understand that you can't make money in that street game of drugs because scarce in-demand resources, yeah, Cocaine's an in-demand resource, but the ability to sell it's not scarce. Everybody's gonna be your competitor. There is no moat. Even Pablo Escobar eventually lost because new blood came in. And so you wanna play a game that not only you're impervious to the new blood, but the new blood's afraid to go where you're going. And that's all if you wanna make a lot of money, but this also applies to other areas, whether you're in science, whether you're in agriculture, whether you're an intellectual, whether you're an artist, a musician, a dancer, whatever it is that you're doing, this is the game. And, you know, I like that quote, I don't know who said it, don't pray for it to be easy or something like that. Um, it's okay to have a challenge. Your greatest memories and the happiness that you find therein will have come from the struggle Hopefully the struggle is not too hard. You don't want to push yourself to the extreme forever or that stress level will also destroy you. You want to find that nice balance where you're challenged and where you're challenging yourself more than the masses. So good luck out there.